Okay, so in this video, we are going to shift priorities and how we generate our pathway. In the previous videos, we looked at how we focused first on the pathway design and had the landforms uh, be, uh, respond and generate from that. In this case, we're actually going to start with a landform and have the pathway respond to that. And this landform, again, can be an existing topography. It can be something that you created on your own. We looked at, in other videos, how to create some of those custom landforms, whether it's from height field images, whether you are using vector forces, or all sorts of other ways, a center line. Now we can kind of take that landform that you created and embed the pathway onto that. And in this case, we're going to start by showing how do you embed a on-grade pathway. So basically, you're going to, again, start with that center line and project it onto the surface and then begin to manipulate it that way so that it's just, again, kind of an on-grade pathway. If this is some type of grass or dirt landscape, this is basically just in a very uh, very subtle extrusion. You can kind of start to see what that profile looks like. Um, however, in this one, again, we're going to kind of build off of it once again. This one is one of the most, much more primitive methodologies. You'll see there's a lot of constraints or issues with this approach. However, it's not to say you can't completely uh, abandon or neglect this approach as well. But basically what it's doing again is kind of uh, taking that center line that you project onto your surface here. And from there, it basically kind of takes the existing uh, points of the topography within a certain distance and begins to kind of project it to its relative uh, plane of what that curve is on. And then from there, you actually get to create the side slope, basically kind of understanding this as the center line and going down. And that's what kind of creates that nice um, blending back into the existing topography. But like I said, there are some serious constraints with this. Uh, you can already kind of see that um, there's some kind of uh, discrepancies or issues with this pathway going into this kind of depression area. So it's to kind of really alter that. We can see that in some areas it gets really steep. And so there's also this part of the script that kind of helps you understand um, the accessibility and function of this pathway. So let me turn this on real quick. So basically what this is doing, and I'll turn the surface off so we can see a little bit better, is what this part is doing is assessing whether your pathway is fitting within the ADA uh, parameters and constraints of having a certain slope without any landing. So again, I'm focusing on doing a pathway where you don't have to worry about introducing uh, landing. So you have to basically stay within a zero to 5% slope. And so what this starts to tell us is where are those areas where it exceeds uh, zero to five percent. So we have green to so this yellow for our zero to five, so that means it's okay. Then yellow to orange, what tells us is technically um, it's still um, accessible, but you do have to have landings there. So it's kind of good just to see where are those areas that are really close to um, those standards. And then everything beyond that eight percent is red. So we can see that we have quite a significant areas of oranges and reds that don't exactly allow for um, comfortable movement through the space. So again, we will show in some other videos how we correct that. But for now, we'll just focus on kind of understanding this process first, because again, it is kind of a compounding process. So this is again kind of just showing the end product and uh, we'll use this video to get you there. So again, I'm gonna start with a blank 
file. Is equivalent to 50 per mole. So let's go ahead and first uh, reference our surface. I'm going to go ahead and bring that back in. That. Could you try again? I don't know why Siri was doing that. I'm going to make sure to trim that. So let's go ahead and show that surface. Oops, where is it? Oh, wrong one. That's, that's why. I don't know why it's on this one, but anyways. Okay, so we have our surface here. So the first thing we want to do is reference it. And in this case, instead of just dividing it by a um, certain grid or a number of points, we actually do want to do it by a specific distance. So again, I'm going to go to Surface, Analysis, and find the dimensions of the surface. And you'll see that it's right around that 90 to 75 range. So we just want to make sure that we're using the dimensions and dividing them by one foot to figure out the number of points in either direction. So I'm going to take both the U and the V, or the X and the Y, and divide them by one. And I'll adjust this too, so I'll do something like 1.0 less than 3 just in case you want to play with some other uh, densities of points. And now I can go to Surface, Divide, choose the surface. These are our new U and V values, and you'll see that it'll be really nice and dense, two of those points. And now I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. So the next thing we will do is begin to reference our uh, surface here, or sorry, our curve as well. So let's go ahead and take our curve. What we want to do, come on, set one curve, I don't, why is it not wanting to reference that? Oh, there we go. Set one curve, okay, so there's that. I'm not sure why there's two on. I think it's because of that. Again, green surface, green layer. Okay, so there's that. And again, in this case, we don't want to just divide our curve by um, a number of points. We want to divide them by a distance or a length. So I'm going to do divide length. And again, use one foot. So I'm just going to use that so that these are always kind of the same. And so now here are my points. Again, I'll make sure to flatten these. And this is where it's going to get a little bit uh, tricky because basically what we want to do is determine the closest points between these and uh, divide them into their respective points. Again, it's kind of a little tricky and I'll try to take my time with this, but again, it's the same process of using the closest point. And again, I always like to do this visual uh, to kind of help you understand what it's happening, is that it's basically taking that grid of surface points and finding which points on the curve is it closest to. And that's what, and we're going to use this to basically kind of, uh, figure out, seems like there's a lot more points or curves than there should be, but no, there is, just looks kind of weird. Um, but anyways, we're going to use this to pretty much kind of filter it out, right? So we can see that this point is closest to these uh, grid of points. So it's a way of just kind of organizing it. I don't really need it, so I'm going to get rid of it. But what's great about this is that it gives us the index of our curve points in relation to our grid of points. And that's what we're going to use to actually begin to uh, parse out or organize um, our giant grid of points on our landform into their respective pathway points. 
So I'm going to go to Math, Operations, and again, Equality. And so I'm going to use this index as my B. And then I basically want to just use the index for all those points, which again, it's just going to be however many points there are, and, but I just want them to be in that uh, sequential order. So I'm going to go to Sets and use the series component. Again, it's going to start at zero index. Step size is one. And then we can use the length of our uh, list coming out of here. So 164 points to tell me to create a list of index items that go from 100 to zero to one zero to 163. So that's going to basically tell us which one re represents each, but we also want to take these, and this is where we start to separate it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, graph to this, and this does take a little bit of computing power, so there's a slight delay to it. Um, but from here, now we get to basically kind of see how they get organized. So now we're going to know which ones are true and false for each one of those points. And so now I can go to list, dispatch. So the first thing I want to do is use this list to apply this patch pattern to. And now when I, again, it's going to give me all 782 points, but it's also going to start to tell me how many are in each uh, one of those points. I think that's, I'm not sure why I got have zero count for some of these. Let me just double check. Huh. Equals index. There definitely should be some points in that first one. Have to use divide by distance. Let's double check. Oh, did I not? Oh, so I think I know. So I forgot to project these down, so that would always help. Um, so let's first project this curve onto our surface. I was wondering why those ones part wasn't working so well, so this should solve our issue. There we go. So now we have number of points on each one. So there we go. So now 
again, I'll show you how this starts to work. So we want to, again, apply this to this, to our distances as well. You'll see in a second. And so now what I want to do is take these points, or not, well, I don't want to do it quite yet, but um, I do want to take these points and now kind of narrow it down to a certain distance. So that's why I wanted to apply this dispatch to my uh, distance list as well, because now I can filter it down to a certain range. So I'm going to go to math operations and do smaller than. And I want to use, I'll start off with something like 4.5 feet. And the reason I want to use 4.5 feet is because it is going to look at the distance in either direction. So four and a half feet is actually equivalent to nine feet. And again, I want to use, I'm not going to actually design a nine foot wide path, but I do want to use part of that to include for the side slopes. In this case, if I do a six inch high pathway, so half a foot, that's six feet wide. The appropriate side slope to usually have on these things is a three to one ratio. So if it's only going up half a foot, so instead of one, it's going half. So half of three is one and a half. And that's what gets me to four and a half on uh, either side. So three feet of actual pathway, then one and a half feet of side slope. So now I can take that. Um, actually something I've tried to do too, which I think might help too, is thinking of it, again, if this is my, the center of my path, and it again kind of, oops, think of it going out three feet in either direction, and then like I said, we have a side slope of one I can't just make a simple dot, so one and a half feet, okay? So that's why, again, we have a total of 4.5 on either side. So let's go ahead and clear that. Um, so now, again, we're going to use this same process of true and false. So I'm going to do less than or equal to and use sets list, dispatch, and again, I'm going to use it for both this list for that pattern, as well as, again, my distances. And I am going to use it for something else as well, but I do want to show you how this starts to work, because what I want to do is show you how it gets filtered down, right? So instead of looking at all the points, now I'm just looking at these ones. And what I want to do at these points is project them down to a plane. And that plane is going to be I'll turn this off for a second. That plane is actually going to be these points of our curve. So if I also Again, I'm going to graph this, drag these into there. Now you'll see that these get projected onto their respective pathway. So you'll see that they do start to kind of leave uh, that existing grade in some areas. All right, so you can see in this area, you can see that the pathway is going to start to cut through it there. And areas like this, we can see that the pathway is actually going to add uh, soil to those areas. So that's how this starts to work. And so 
I'm going to turn this off. Uh, again, I'm sticking with my distances for this. Because this from here is what we're going to use to kind of help with our graph mapper again. So with those distances, I can now go to input, graph mapper. And this is, again, how we create that side slope. So I'm going to double click, or sorry, right click, graph type, use Bezier. So again, the closer it is, the more I want it to um, go up a certain height. In this case, I want it to just go up six inches or half a foot. So I'm just going to make sure I get kind of close. It does snap a little bit. And then as it gets further away, so that five and four and a half, it starts to um, return basically back to grade. So from here, um, what I wanted to do, because this is basically going to just create a very narrow pathway, I'm going to double click in here and basically say, you know what, just start to do that measurement from distances of three feet and four and a half feet. So again, this is where we're sticking within just that one foot of side slope. So there's that. And now I can start to say, you know what? Move these projected points based off of this graph mapped value. So now you'll see that, again, they'll start to kind of round out as they get kind of towards or further away from that center line. So instead of them just being perfectly planar, they go up a little bit and they start to round out. So you can use this to pretty much start to kind of create that side slope as best as possible. So that's how we start to get that kind of quality. If you want, you could even say like, you know what, maybe I do want that to start in a little bit closer, so let's try two feet. You'll see a little more significance with that side slope now. All right, so there we go. And so now we've got our new points. And this is, again, where it gets a little tricky because we have to basically return these new uh, points onto the existing grid. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and flatten these points. I'm going to go to sets, list, replace. And again, I'm using this uh, pool, the initial original grid of points. I also need to find the index, and this is where we have to kind of do it a couple times. So I'm going to go to list, item index, and I'm going to use this. I'm also going to drag this into there, and I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. So that is going to give me the actual list items. But now I'm also going to apply this dispatch for the one, same one that I used for the filtering. I just want to filter the ones uh, that are within that six or that four and a half feet distance. So you'll see now my list index item has been reduced as well. And there should be the same amount of points. Oops, let's also uh, shoot. This is where we want to. My apologies, this is where it gets, like I said, a little tricky. So, okay, so we actually don't flatten it quite yet. I didn't think so, but anyways. So I'll stick with that. Then that will work, and then I'll flatten this. And now we can see that we've got 1,400 points. 
for index items. So that'll go into here. And that should be equivalent to those move points. So 1462, 1462, perfect. Now I can turn, oops, don't disable it. Turn that off. So now we can start to see our um, on-grade pathway. And so now what I want to do is, again, kind of create a surface from that. So you can definitely start to see where it kind of goes above and um, above it, but then it's also going to start to cut away in some areas. So again, we're going to do surface from points. Use that same, so again, x plus 1 always. And whatever is going into the U value there, it's also going into this. Now I can turn this off and we can start to see what our new surface looks like. All right, so now we can again see the, how that profile is happening on that end. Like I said, um, it's not necessarily ADA accessible, it's on grade, but it can have some steep conditions. And in order to actually evaluate that, we want to also include that part. So again, I'll turn this stuff off. And I'm going to use again. Uh, so what we want to do is basically uh, evaluate the vertical distance of these points. So I'm going to go to Vector, go to Point, and Deconstruct. So this is going to give me the Z values for all of these points on my pathway. And in order to kind of understand this, again, I'm going to sketch this real quick. So if I've got, again, a series of points, I have all sorts of different slope conditions. However, they're all one feet apart. That's what we set those parameters to. Let's say this one's at 10. This one's at 10.5. This one's at 10.7. Um, we basically want to find out what that elevation differences. So this is 0.5, this one's 0.2, because now that we, once we get that distance of elevation change, and we have the length, we can actually use that to determine our slope conditions. So that's why we're going at it with this process. So let's go ahead and clear this up. So like I said, now we have our z values, but we want to again kind of see what those uh, segments are between these points, right? So if I were to kind of think of it as like, what's the slope between these two points, the slope between these two, these two, and so forth. So what I have to do is go to math, domain, and consecutive domains. So that's, once I drag all those Z values in here, it's going to begin to, again, kind of create those segments. By default, it's actually going to accumulate these. So when I see 10.004 and 10.1, it's actually going to add those up. So it's going to start with 10.004, but then it's going to be 20.1, roughly. So that's why you have it. So make sure that you actually right-click and set Boolean to false. So this way, it just kind of groups them consecutively together. So it goes 10.004 to 10.1. Then that is same one of 10.1 to the next one. So that's, again, you're repeating some of these points as you go on. So that's why you want to do that. The next thing you want to do is deconstruct these domains. And basically using one value and minus the other. So again, you have to be mindful of the fact that if I'm taking, let's just draw this again real quick an upward slope, which again has a positive slope, 
But if this is 9 feet, and that's 10 feet, and I do 9 minus 10, I'll get negative 1. So I have a negative value that represents a positive slope. And if I were to do the opposite of going downhill, this is 10, and that's 9, and 10 minus 9 equals a positive 1, even though it's a negative slope percent. So we have to also not only just subtract it to get that difference, we also want to find the negative. So that way our positive slopes are actually reading as a positive value, and our negative slopes are reading as a negative value. So now that we have that, so we have our distance and elevation, which is what this component's doing, and we have our length. Now we use the slope formula to figure that out. So I'm going to do operations and do division. So I'm dividing the rise or the distance and elevation by the length or the run, however you want to kind of refer to it as rise over run or distance and elevation over length, which is the grading. Uh, variables. So now I have all those slope conditions and you'll see that they actually still read as some are positive and some are negative. So the next thing we want to do is actually uh, create that color gradient. So I'm going to go to parameters and I'm going to use my color gradient. I'm going to choose one of my new ones here. So I again have 0 to 5%, 5 to a just to see what that might look like. So before I just drag this in here, like I said, it's showing both positive and negative value. Whether it's, um, let's say, 13% in the upward direction or the downward direction, it's still not ADA accessible. So regardless of it's positive or negative, we need to make sure that that 13% and anything above 5% gets registered correctly. So I want to take these values that have both positive and negative and find the absolute value. And so now I can drag that into there. And again, what's good about this is I did keep these in decimal format. So 0 0.096 is actually 9.6%. 0. 8.3 is 8.3%, 0.07 is 7%, so um, that's going to work well with just keeping these defaults of 0 and 1. And now I'll go ahead and display that. So I'm going to go to Display, Custom Preview, so these are the colors. Here's the geometry I want to display. And I'll go ahead and turn off my surface so I can see it a little better. So now we can see just how many areas that we have beyond that desirable 0 to 5%, right? These purples and pinks means it's too steep to actually access. You can kind of see that in that case. Um, so again, whether it's going downhill in that pathway, it's still inaccessible because you have to think, well, they might be coming up that, right? And even if they're just going that direction, that's still going to be tough to... Um, control. So that's how we get um, those parameters and you'll see in the next video how we utilize this information and use a variety of ways to basically remap or regrade it to work within a certain bounds. Um, so look forward to that in the next video. Um, the other thing that's good to show with this um, if I turn on, again, these new contours that show my pathway, I can even show the contours for the original surface. And I'm, again, using the same distance for both. You can start to see, like, how um, this new uh, proposed contours begin to veer off that existing. And what's good is you can start to see that there is, again, the kind of crown of our path. In some areas, you have these swales. Some areas, you're showing that it cuts off to the landform. So what's cool is that this side slope profile intuitively also creates some swales for drainage on either side, right? So 
with these uphill areas, instead of the water just draining onto the pathway, it'll drain into these swales on the perimeters and avoid kind of uh, making that inaccessible. So that's what's also kind of nice with that. And you can see that with the contours. So this is cool where you can see, again, uh, both proposed and existing, and you can overlay those with uh, site plan drawings to show uh, where those changes are made.